Hello, I'm Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmage, we offer these short Bible studies on our lectionary readings. This week, we find ourselves in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. I've added just a couple extra verses to give us a little more background. Our commentary this week comes from Brian Peterson of 2013. Before we get started, let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you praise and thanks for the blessing of this time, for the blessing of this day, and for the blessing of this opportunity to study your word. God, uh, give us time to not only um, listen to the video, but to spend some more time in the book of Acts, for this book just describes for us in so many beautiful ways the movement of the Holy Spirit. And God, as we read these passages today, might we uh, too be moved by it and see the ways in which you work. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we get started today, um, I'd like to just offer a little bit of background information. And as we look to the beginning of this text, um, just a couple verses earlier, that's why I have 6 through 8 included, uh, we see Paul and his companions, Silas and Timothy, seem to be at a loss for where to go next. So they stumble around the region, running into one barrier after another, set up by God, barred by the Spirit from going south and west into Asia, or from going north into Bithynia. Paul appears backed into a coastal corner at Troas by God's strange and repeated no. These incidences might remind the church that God is in charge of the mission that the church often searches for God's calling in mistaken directions and aborted attempts, and that God's Spirit often speaks through frustrating and difficult discernment. I think that's often true. We need to stop and pause and um, to discern the direction of God isn't always easy. And sometimes when it's easy, I'm almost like, that was too easy. For God often calls us to really think about it from all angles and to listen to all voices. So as we turn to Acts 16, 6 through 15, please open your Bibles and you can follow along or you can follow along on the screen. They went through the region of Phrygeria and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, following the day to Neapolis and then from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the, by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and, in a, and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The question I have for us is, are we open to receiving a vision? Paul receives his vision in the night, and one might think that getting a vision from God would make everything clear, but even a vision requires interpretation. More to the point, it requires the community of faith. Famously, this is one of the first points in Acts where the narrator seems to join the characters as part of the story. But I think this begs the question, are we open to receiving a vision? And when we do, what do we do with it? Do we do what Paul and Silas were doing. Paul received the vision, but verse 10 says that we concluded what it meant and what to do about it. The vision must be interpreted, and that task does not fall to Paul alone. The small community contained in we is involved in discerning that this is God's call, not just to an individual, but to us too. 
that the help which is needed is the preaching of the gospel, that the call was for the immediate action. The mission doesn't belong to Paul alone. Even though at this point in Acts the other apostles are almost completely left behind, the mission, of course, doesn't even belong to the church. It is God's mission. Yet the church is called into the discernment of God's mission at every turn. I think it's easy to, to think that this can become our mission and to remember that this mission belongs to God and that's the one of whom we are to be following. It is worth noticing that Paul and his entourage do not stop in the lovely seaside town of Neapolis, which is modern-day Kabbalah, but immediately head for Philippi. Despite the notorious difficulty in translating the middle section of verse 12, a leading city of the district or a city of the first district, perhaps the main point comes at the end of the sentence, a Roman colony. This is where the empire was powerful and popular. This was the heart of the empire's project in this corner of the world, a place that lived like an extended section of Rome itself and tended to be an example of what Rome offers the world. Perhaps Paul heads straight there because a place like Philippi is where the gospel of the Lord Jesus is needed most clearly. And so, unlike the unsuccessful wandering that characterized the verses before the vision, here there is no hesitation and no meandering. It is straight to Philippi. In places just like that, God planted and still plants the church to the community that says no to the ways of imperial power and offers a different way of life, a different story, and a different promise. This is what the church is still called to be and to offer in the face of different and not so different systems of power and oppression. It's also important to remember that God's timing is not our timing. Though the team apparently wastes no time in getting to the city, the mission still requires patience. Not much happens for a while. They were there for some days. Just how long was that? The appeal and the vision is urgent, and the response to it is immediate. But the results are not seen right away. When God does begin to work in Philippi, it comes with a surprise. Paul's vision had involved a Macedonian man, but the first to welcome the gospel in Philippi was a woman, and in fact a woman from the area that Paul had just left in the east. Any simple expectations about God's mission are clearly going to be wrong. How odd and grace-filled that this woman from Thyatira in Asia, where the Spirit had forbidden Paul to go, is now met in Philippi, and here's the gospel. Again, this is a lesson in this is God's doing and not ours. Lydia listens, but the Lord must open the heart to believe. Verse 14. At this crucial point, Paul practically disappears from the story. It is not the charismatic personality of the pastor or laity that has the power to create faith. It must come from God's own merciful activity from beginning to end. This text stresses that it is God who is in charge of the mission. God who, see, who sets its direction, and God who determines its results. Lydia's faith becomes immediately active. She is baptized along with her whole household, and she opens her home. Social and cultural barriers crumble, and this corner of the empire is beginning to be changed by God's grace. The author says that Lydia prevailed upon Paul and his companions to stay with her and accept her hospitality. There's only one other place in the New Testament where this word is used, in Emmaus on Easter evening, as the two traveling disciples urge the risen Jesus to stay with them that night. The book of Acts continues on, and we are the Acts 29 church. I think it's easy for us to look at the book of Acts and just go, oh, wow, that's amazing things. But really, the book of Acts has continued on for 2,000 years as we hear the stories of believers, as we hear how God has moved through people. And we are the Acts 29 church. Acts 28 is what ends the chapter of that book. But new, this new Acts 29 chapter has started 2,000 years ago. Perhaps the verbal echo is not accidental. By lives transformed and opened up in faithful discipleship, 
the fellowship of the risen lord continues to extend into the world here near the end of the easter season we continue to experience and to live out that fellowship prevailing upon the world to hear and see and know the mercy of god in the risen christ so let's just take a look at some of the questions we have here and hopefully you'll take some time to stop and think about them throughout the week where is the spirit calling us and doing so through those whom we might otherwise think are outside our circle of responsibility I think it's easy for us to think we will hear the Spirit through someone whom we think we know really well. And yet, God speaks through strangers, speaks through all kinds of situations and circumstances. And so, I think our question to ourselves is, are we willing to hear it? Are we ready to hear it? And are we open enough to know that God could be speaking in these circumstances? What visions call us beyond the boundaries into ministry where we had not considered it before? So I think we need to ask ourselves, you know, do we hold any visions for uh, ministry? What visions do we hold for love of Christ? What does that look like? Um, or have we put boundaries around something where there doesn't need to be boundaries around? Have we made our own boundaries that yet God is calling us outside of? Well, I hope you have some time to read a little more from this amazing book of Acts and how the Holy Spirit is moving through folks 2,000 years ago, but also to contemplate how the Holy Spirit is still moving through um, God's people and through strangers and through all people in our world today. God's blessings to you as you go forth in this week.